So, I know it's been a while, but uh, this time around we're going to be covering uh, both discriminated records and variant records. And that's because, essentially, variant records just build up on discriminant records. Or, conversely, that discriminant records are a more simplified version of variant records. But they are essentially the same thing. Um, Let's just jump right into it, and I will cover what these would be used for as we go. So, to start, let's just begin with the... Uh, I forget which language I'm using. <laughs> oh, okay. We need the name first, so we'll just do example is record, and then and record, and then we can put something in here. So, let's just do... Uh, Okay, this is just a basic record, I just want to show getting the value out of this first, uh, just as a little refresher. I'm going to need to initialize one of these first, so uh, I don't know if that will be up here. Uh, can't do that with just one, so we'll do this. Then if we run this, okay, pretty straightforward there, nothing really special going on. Where we add a discriminant is through this, so uh, let's just call it V, and we'll make it uh, the type can just be a care. Sure. Forgetting what language, again. It's not care, it's character in Ada, but yeah. So you'll see immediately if we try to build this again, that it's going to complain. And that's because for all intents and purposes, anything inside of the discriminant can be considered one of the fields of the record. Uh, so you can kind of view it like that. Uh, conceptually, that's sort of how that works. But the other thing that making it a discriminant causes is that you have to actually initialize that along with the... And I have a syntax highlighting error, but along with the type. <laughs> no value supplied for discriminant V. That's on line 9. Yes, it is. Oh, I, I forgot about that. So, um, if you're doing a full initialization of a variable, that actually has to be here. And now we won't complain. And as you can see, getting the uh, getting the I field out of that works exactly the same. Uh, getting the V field would be the identical because, like I had said, it's essentially just another one of the fields within the record. It shouldn't be considered any different as far as getting values out of it. Uh, if we want to do another one of these, so let's just call this EA. And then we'll do an EB. In this one, we're not going to initialize immediately. We're just going to describe the type. Okay. As you can see, uh, this is what I had tried to do before uh, because I forgot that the it, when you're fully initializing it, it goes into the aggregate. But if you are not fully initializing it, you have to supply a value for the discriminant regardless. And that's because for all intents and purposes, the discriminant makes it so that uh, the same type but a different discriminant are incompatible with each other. 
So if we try to do something like this, where we say uh, EB is equal to EA, or EB is uh, assign the value of EA, rather. Um, if you are not familiar with discriminants, it would seem like this should work, because both are of the type example. As you can see, though, it does not work. Uh, they are essentially different types. And in a way, this can be viewed kind of similar to uh, different child types within a class hierarchy being fundamentally incompatible with each other. Similar idea. So we need to actually uh, do this legitimate, or yeah, fully, fully assign that legitimately. And let's just set that to two. That's fine. How about you supply for discriminant B? Oh, because it's already got one. Ow! No, I know how that works. Uh, so, if I remember correctly, if we try to reassign V to anything else, it's going to complain. Yeah. Uh, I think you can set it in the same character, but there's a sort of better way to do it, too. So if we set V to default, does that work? No, that doesn't work. But we can do uh, EB, V, and that should pull in the same value. Yeah. So, what what I was playing around with there, real quick, um, you want to essentially copy the value of V from whatever it was before. Uh, you can hard code it like I had done before, where I, I put in the, the V character itself. That gets tedious, especially trying to if you have a bunch of these and are trying to remember what was what. Uh, I, I really don't recommend that. So you can copy that over like that, or in this case, just because it's such a small one, you know, we're really only assigning one value within the field, um, you can just do it through assigning the value, it's, uh, the, the field directly. So either one of those options work. Uh, this is pretty much it for discriminants. Uh, like I'd kind of hinted at, these become useful when you need uh, what is essentially the same type to be incompatible with each other uh, for a certain reason. Uh, discriminants are a little bit more restricted as far as what can actually be used as a discriminant goes. Uh, for example, you can't use a string um, I know you can use unbounded strings, though, and the reasons for that are a little weird, but essentially you can't use any type of array. Uh, there may be a few other restrictions there that I'm not aware of, but I know arrays are the big one. Uh, luckily, the NAT compiler is good about giving error messages about what's actually valid, so if you run into that kind of issue, it's going to be very clear what the actual issue is and what uh, is appropriate for uh, actual use as a discriminant. Uh, next would be the variance, so let's just tweak this into a variant. Uh, I don't remember if these work. I, I really don't remember if ranges work for that. Opponent may not follow variant part. Oh yeah, uh, so any of the fields that will exist in every single variant have to be at the very beginning. <clears throat> 
no value supplied for component B. Okay, so uh, as it turns out, you can use ranges in there. I, like I said, I completely forgot if that was allowed or not. Uh, but as it turns out, it is. And as you can see here, because the uh, the variant we supplied, the capital A, is you know within this range, uh, it expects this field to be there. And because in this one, again, we did a capital B that's within this range, it expects this field to be there. So we need to supply a value for that. And so while we're doing that, let's create one that's actually within this range as well. <coughs> so we're going to need a value for B in this one. Uh, let's just do that. And so you're going to need Uh, let me put the B there just to show what happens. Uh, just to, it kind of makes variant records make a little more sense if you see the error that's going to happen. Okay, it looks like I got another issue there. Value for discriminant be static. Oh. Why did you work before but not now? Oh, wait, never mind. I know, I know, I know, I know. It doesn't want you to possibly change it. it, it it's because it's a variant record. Now, I get it. I get it. Uh, so in that instance, what we need to do then is... So this is what I was talking about before, with uh, wanting to show you this error. Uh, component not present in subtype of example. So uh, if we see that's on line 21, that's where we try to access the B field of EC. Which, if you remember, the discriminant provided here is a lowercase c, which would mean that there's going to be an A field and no B field. That's important. If we change this to using an A field, and then, you know, obviously of the correct type, <clears throat> this works. That's because variant records are essentially a possible list, you don't have to have this, of common fields which apply to every single variant, as well as, I mean, if it's a variant record, you, I guess arguably you could not have any of these, but it'd be stupid. It would just make it a discriminant record with a case structure in there that doesn't need to be there, but uh, practically, there needs to be something in here that uh, provide some level of variance. And in our case, it's, it's just a simple example. It's not practical by any means, but it does show what needs to be shown. Uh, based on the discriminant, you're going to have either no additional field or one of these two additional fields. These are useful for situations where you would have kind of a, like a very simple class hierarchy. Uh, the, the functions, well, methods, if you're working with classes, really, uh, wouldn't really have that much of, uh, of a difference between these variants. And it's essentially just having some additional data tag along 
uh, any of the variants within the methods could be uh, very easy to write. You, you know, I'm talking very simple class hierarchy. Uh, these may actually be uh, a better option. Uh, I do use them sometimes for that reason. <clears throat> so... Yeah, I don't really think there's anything more to show there. It's, just, it's a fairly simple concept. Um, next time around, we'll be getting into tagged records, which forms the basis of object-oriented programming. Uh, unlike in other languages, object orientation is rather broken up into discrete parts that you can optionally take use of. It's not like an all-in to object-oriented programming, but you certainly can go that route. Um, for now, though, hopefully you found this video helpful. If it has, consider giving a thumbs up and also consider subscribing. Um, comment with questions, all that kind of stuff that you pretty much already know to do, but apparently these kinds of things serve as a good reminder. Uh, until the next video, have a good one.